Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. Uh, in today's video, it's just going to be a bit of a quick one in terms of some new products that ZWO have released over in uh, Neef in North America. Uh, I don't live in North America, so sadly I didn't get a chance to actually go there and see what these uh, products were. However, there's been a few sort of uh, drops of information on Facebook and, and on their website that I thought I'd just uh, talk through quickly and share with the rest of you. So if you're interested in that, then keep watching. So uh, ZWO have been uh, pretty busy over the past few months uh, producing a number of fantastic new products. They've got um, eight new products that they've released in the uh, Neef show over in North America. Um, it would be great if uh, if they could come over to the UK at some point and uh, demonstrate some of these things at PAS and IAS uh, in the UK that happens sort of uh, once every year. However, um, yeah, at Neef they've released uh, eight new products. So kind of starting off with um, something that people have been crying out for a long time now, and that's a, a camera rotator, or as they've called it, a camera angle adjuster. Um, this, I think, really completes uh, the, the ZWO product range in terms of being able to, as soon as you've done polar alignment, just automate literally everything. I think that's absolutely fantastic addition and can't wait to see that. Uh, they've also reduced... They've also released uh, a new camera, so it's a one-shot color camera. It's based on the 2600 M MC Pro, but this camera's got the difference in terms of it's got a guide camera actually built into the the camera itself, which is uh, an interesting sort of concept. I can I can see people really sort of wanting and benefiting from this. Uh, the news on on various forums and things like that is. Uh, people have sort of said, oh, I can understand why they've not done a mono variant of this because of the issues with narrowband filters and uh, using that guide camera. But um, yeah, it does sort of provide quite a nice a nice feature in terms of the ability to just have everything all built within that optical train. So uh, that's that's quite interesting. Uh, the next thing is the, the little brother or little sister to the AM5 mount. So they've come out with the AM3 which I'll talk about in, uh, in a little bit, in a little bit more detail. Um, very interesting product. I can see it sort of competing a lot with the Star Adventurer sort of pro mounts and the Ioptron uh, sort of travel travel mounts and things like that. So, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting one there. They've released four new telescopes. So, yeah, previously, ZWO hasn't really operated in the, in the telescope area at all. You can see that they're sort of gradually moving into uh, various different areas. From here, you've got the 65mm um, apochromatic telescope. You've got an 80mm 107 and 130. But finally, just in terms of a brief overview of everything, uh, they've released a, a new all-in-one smart telescope called the Sea Star s50 quite intriguing really i think there's there's been a number of these uh all-in-one type telescopes released over the past few years yeah there's, there's been one this year as well which uh, has, has been reviewed and uh, there's been lots of videos on that so uh zwo if you're watching uh, feel free to send me one of these and i'd love to review it for you uh, i find it quite an intriguing device just purely um lowering that bar to be able to get more people into astrophotography and more people to enjoy this hobby i think that's absolutely fantastic I, it's definitely got a, a limited use i think but i've never actually tried one so uh, it would be good to see what it's like so originally when i planned to do this video and just talk about uh, the products that they've they've announced over in neef um i scoured sort of the internet and various forums and facebook groups and things like that to get some information pulled together a few images that i could share but then uh, tail end of today uh, i noticed that there was a post on on facebook where they provided some links to their uh, new product releases so you can uh, go to this particular url I'm going to link all of these in the description so you can have a look where they show all of the different uh, products like the C Star, all of the telescopes, the AM3, uh, the, the dual camera 2600 and also there's a, an update to the ASI Air Plus in terms of extra memory. The, the best thing to do is just to kind of go through these different pages. Uh, I think the website's struggling a little bit at the moment so uh, you have to yeah wait for the page to load and it takes a very long time. I've created some PDFs of their pages and I'll link to those as well so you can just take a look at those instead. So the first product is the AM3 mount, uh, the, the little sibling of the uh, very capable AM5 mount. From what I can see uh, in terms of all of the information about this particular mount, 
is uh, it's about a kilo uh, lighter than the AM5. Uh, it's a lot smaller, so there was a, a, a photograph that was shared uh, that put the AM3 mount next to uh, what I can only assume is probably an iPhone, uh, basically a smartphone, so you can get an idea of the, the actual scale of it. Uh, they also sort of put out some uh, performance indicators in terms of comparing the AM3 to the AM5. Um, lots of similarities there in terms of how it actually works, being a uh, being a strain wave gear mount drive system. I think the the difference is uh, fundamentally being uh, the actual weight of the the device itself. So the AM5 is five kilos, the AM3 is four kilos. In terms of the payload capacity, uh, you've got the AM5 is thirteen. Uh, kilos without the counterweight and 20 kilos with the counterweight and then the AM3 is 8 kilos without it and 14 kilos with the counterweight so I think actually it's still a pretty uh, capable mount even from for home use let alone travel use um, I've not seen any announcements or heard anything in terms of whether they're targeting particularly um, just sort of getting out and about but dropping an extra kilo but not sacrificing too much in terms of uh, the, the the load capacity I think is is still pretty compelling. Um, all of the other same sort of uh, things and features in terms of dovetail mount, the the same ability to be able to uh, connect your telescopes to it and control it. No information in terms of power consumption at the moment. I'm assuming it's going to be some kind of 12 volt uh, power supply is required, and yeah, you you'll need to understand sort of. Uh, what kind of battery pack you might need with it. The, the fact it says TBD and I can't see anywhere where you would put batteries, I'm assuming you're still going to need some kind of separate power supply. So there might be some differences there in terms of uh, how you would actually power the mount compared to something like the Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro mount, for example. Still got the same guide ports um, and communication mechanisms to the, the mount as well. So there's no real differences there. So a very interesting um, product release, I'd definitely say. So on to the ASI 2600MC Duo, as they've, as they've called it. Uh, so it still comes with the same main sensor that the 2600MC um, and MM Pro telescopes come with, the Sony IMX571. Uh, still with that 16-bit analog to digital converter, and forced 14 stops of dynamic range etc but the difference is that there's a guide sensor that comes with it which is a type 1 slash 1 1.8 sc2210 um, which to be fair means very little to me at this particular point in time however it's got that capability of being able to do guiding all within the camera itself there's some information about the actual sensors itself uh, same as the 2600 um, but then you've got some sensor information in terms of the guide camera, a sort of a high definition ratio and uh, pixel size in terms of 1920 by 1080. Uh, the, the quantum efficiency of the guide sensor as well is uh, 92%, which is pretty high. So uh, yeah, this, this image here just sort of showing, yep, you can do all of your guiding and imaging uh, within one particular plane, not needing a guide scope, etc. So there could be some cost savings there as well. You definitely don't need to buy a guide camera. However, yeah, if you've already got one, then uh, yeah, too late there. So there's also an optional ability with this camera to have a, a tilt plate that you can actually adjust without needing to take the camera off. That said, I've not had any particular problems with mine, but uh, yeah, I guess some people will do. Um, and just some comparison information in terms of the MC Pro and the MC Duo. Uh, the one, or one of the many, ob benefits of the 2600 uh, camera range is the fact there's no amp glow which is fantastic so uh, no need for all of the calibration frames that you would need in order to be able to remove that amp glow from your images which is quite nice um, and also a fantastic quantum efficiency in terms of the camera's ability to be able to um, yeah, sense the photons hitting the actual center itself so all, all fantastic uh, from that perspective uh, this camera also comes with an anti-dew heater as well, which you can control within the ASI Air device itself. So you can cool the sensor down to the particular temperature that you want, and also you turn on the anti-dew heater. I think it's also this that requires this camera to have a separate power supply compared to other cameras where you can plug them directly into the ASI Air device. So uh, all in all, a fantastic looking product there really.
So moving on to ZWO's FF65 APO telescope, uh, 65 millimeter aperture, and then there's also an 80, 107, and 130. Uh, this particular telescope's got 460 millimeters of focal length. It's a quintuplet APO refractor as well, so uh, a very capable telescope, I'm sure. Although, yep, with all of these things, you really need to get your hands on it and see exactly what it's like. Fantastic that it supports uh, full frame imaging, but I would expect that from most telescopes these days. Um, also interesting that there's no need for a field flatter, so, but then, yeah, to be expected from a uh, quintuplet at the end of the day. Uh, comes with a two and a half inch large rack pinion focuser. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be a two speed focuser in there as well. Uh, yeah, it does look like that from uh, from the images. Oh yes, a, a, a 1 to 10 fine adjustment ratio for the focusing. Um, and no need to calculate the back focus, which is interesting. I wonder how they do that. So, uh, great feature set from that. does look like a, a very nice telescope. It's good to see the uh, carry handle on there as well, so you can sort of add it to your mount and take it away and carry it around and things without any particular problem. Uh, place for a guide camera there if you don't have the new uh, 2600 duo and yeah just generally looks like a very very nice telescope potentially but uh, you yeah, have to wait and see what the uh, the prices are like first I say that the price is at the top so yeah a thousand dollars for that particular telescope so <laughs> for me it would be about a thousand pounds thanks to uh, good old exchange rates so it's worth um, yeah just downloading the uh, PDFs or going to the website if you can just to uh, see further information about this particular telescope. So the next one in their range is the FF80 APO, so 80mm aperture, 600mm focal length, another quadruplet APO refractor, uh, no need for a flattener, basically the same, all of the same things with that telescope but different focal length and different aperture. So that comes out at f7.5 need to have a quick look to see what the focal ratio is for the other camera as well so 416 divided by 65 is f6.4 so that one comes out at fifteen hundred dollars or fourteen ninety nine then the next one in the range uh, gets a lot more expensive each time so the zwo ff 107 so this comes out at $2,499, so 107mm aperture, 749 focal length, and this comes out at f7. Again, quadruple APO, supports full frame, no field flattener required, same focusing mechanism, um, and also no need to measure the back focus. And then finally, FF130, which is 130 millimeter aperture and a thousand millimeter focal length which comes out at f 7.6 so another quadruplet apo <laughs> spotting a theme here um, and all of the other same features and then just on to the uh, the final piece that's actually on their website at the moment so you've got the the new c star s50 it looks like an incredibly compact telescope uh, it looks very portable fundamentally looks like it comes with everything that you would need in terms of there's the telescope, the controller, the focuser, um, all within uh, this small package. What was interesting is they, they actually, ZWO did a bit of an April Fool's joke um, with this and they sort of shared this on uh, shared this on social media and it was a bit of a joke and they were like, yeah, yeah, that, that would be nice but ha-ha type thing. I thought it was quite amusing that, yep, they've done that and they've actually then released it. So I think the things that I'm interested in is actually what, what the telescope is capable of doing in such a small form factor. So it looks like you control it uh, using the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, it's got built-in sensors to level the tripod and make sure that everything's where it needs to be. Low power consumption uh, can be recharged via a power bank while in use. And the battery life is six hours, um, as you would expect with a device like this. So autofocus, auto go to and everything. So in general, looks like a very nice, capable device to at least see things in the night sky with uh, with relative ease. So on to some specifications here. This looks interesting. So uh, weighs uh, three kilograms, battery life uh, six hours, aperture is uh, fifty millimeters, focal length is two hundred and fifty. So that's f five. Uh, imaging sensor is the IMX four six two. 
it says here it supports MP4, AVI and TIFF, the resolution of 1920 by 1080 I'm not sure if that's the final images that come out or just a video resolution. Uh, supports the different um, Wi-Fi types of 5G and 2.4G. So yeah, there's, I think it's just a bit of a teaser really. I think it would be fantastic to get my hands on this device and and see what it's actually like because theoretically a focal length of 250 millimeters you should you're not going to be doing planetary unless um, that image sensor is absolutely tiny however it could be quite a nice focal length for um, doing a lot of nebula type photography it could be a nice focal length for doing a lot of nebula type fo photography so um, yeah let's see what that is so uh, the the one piece that's not on their website for some reason it's a bit uh, surprising it's not mentioned at all is the camera angle adjuster so I'm hoping this isn't like a late April Fool's joke uh, there's lots of people that are interested in this particular piece of hardware uh, I know that I absolutely love one I think uh, whenever I set set up my um, my imaging and I do multiple targets uh, throughout a particular season or night time just the ability to be able to rotate the camera to, to frame it up properly for a given target and then to be able to slew to another target and frame that exactly how I want that as well and to be able to go back and forth um, that would be really really useful for me I'm well bought into the ZWO product range uh, I do love the, the uh, ZWO ASI Air device but that does mean that I can only use ZWO products and this is a very clear product that is is missing from their product range until now. I think also another one would be a, an LED panel that you can control remotely through the ASI Air to, to be able to take those flats when you need to take them as well. I'd absolutely love that and I think yeah, that would definitely sort of complete things off for me. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Hit the like button. Put a comment in the comments section in terms of what products you, you've been looking uh, forward to the most. And uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, clear skies.